So we have three speakers today, and I'm really, really pleased to, to welcome them. We've got Steve Hake, who is a chair of the Parkrun Research Board and professor of sports engineering at Sheffield Hallam University. We've got Dr. Simon Tobin, who's an NHS GP at Norwood Surgery in Southport, UK, where he has worked for 28 years. He's an enthusi enthusiastic advocate for offering lifestyle uh, change as a possible alternative to medication. Simon's also an ambassador for health and well-being at Parkrun. And finally, Sean Smith is a parkrunner from Southport and retired early from his role as an IT accessibility specialist following a cardiac arrest in 2016. As part of his treatment, um, his GP, Dr. Simon Tobin, suggested he tried parkrun. And I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to give any spoilers um, for that. So, yeah, over to Steve, who's going to do his um, presentation. Over to you, Hi, my name's Steve Haig. Um, this is the Advanced Wellbeing Research Centre where the uh, Parkrun Research Board uh, is based. Um, I'm going to move on to this slide. This is a healthy, happy planet. So that's the mantra of Parkrun. Um, I'm not going to assume that everyone knows what Parkrun is. Parkrun is a free, weekly timed, five kilometre run, walk or, vo or volunteer across uh, 20 countries and territories. Um, and with at least 7 million um, registrants worldwide. Those numbers change daily, so I'll definitely have got them wrong because they're always increasing. So there you can see some typical uh, parkrun participants. So what do we know um, about uh, park, park runners and what do we know about park in the UK? So we've done quite a lot of research um, over the last few years to find out these uh, the answer to that question. So um, here is one uh, particular um, uh, paper that we had, Parkrun, the promotion of physical activity, insights for primary care clinicians from an online survey, and that's in the British Journal of General, General Practice. It's freely available, uh, and we'll be sending the links around. Um, and here is an editorial that uh, Simon and I uh, wrote together, um, he coined this fantastic title, Actively Tackling Inactivity, uh, which is one of my favourite paper titles ever. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the findings from those papers just now in the next five minutes or so. So who are parkrunners? And we've got to be a little bit careful because it's who are parkrunners who like to answer surveys. There's always that caveat. And um, if you look at a park run, kind of typical park run, you've got some, to be honest, let's face it, some skinny white blokes in vests running off into in, in front, followed by a, a complete mixture of people, young and old. And then you end up with the rear, you end up with dog walkers and pram pushers um, and all sorts of um, a, a real nice eclectic mix um, of people. And there's a typical picture of uh, what a park run looks like. That's my local park run. You've got these people running off quite fast and then you've got kids starting to appear and then uh, dads with sons and sons with moms and, and then friends running together and so on. So if we were to look at park runs starting with the fastest, so this is time in minutes along this axis, and this is less than 20 minutes all the way up to greater than 50 minutes. And these are in two and a half minute chunks of people. So you have the fewest fast runners, FR, and the fewest walkers, W. And you have some runners walkers and you have the most middle runners. Okay, that's kind of how it works. It gets quite... Uh, a busy hit in the middle at around 27 to 30 minutes. So what you find in terms of the male female splits, you find that in the proportion here that, as I just said, you get a lot of males at the beginning uh, at the front because they are the, the fastest with a few females and then that drops. So you get a 50 50 split um, in the middle um, where you've got these middle ones. So 50 50 males, females. And then behind that, you've got 80% females and 20% males. And, and that's kind of replicated down here uh, with the runners walkers. I'm just gonna make a note about what these little stars mean. These little stars tell you about statistical significance and they're all, everything is compared 
to walkers. So if there's no stars, it's saying each of these bars is the same as runners walkers. If there's one star, it's a little bit different. Two stars, it's more different. And if it's three stars, it's really different. And so you can see that the front and back in terms of proportion is very different. So here we've got age. Now in our survey, this particular survey, um, the participants were age 16 plus. Uh, and so the average age up, up front here is about 36. The average age at the back here is about 56. And, and it more or less just increases from there. Average age of our survey in here is just under 50. And that does replicate to some extent uh, what we see in the parkrun population as a whole. In terms of um, health, here we asked the question, how limited were you by a health condition lasting 12 months or more? And so from uh, you know, an NH NHS point of view, this is a really important question. So he had the answer, which was no, yes, limited a little, or yes, limited a lot. And so the colored bits uh, are yes, limited a little, no, uh, yes, limited a lot, and then the white is no. So down at the back here, we've got 45% of our, of our walkers have a health condition limiting them 12 months or more. In the middle, it's about 9%. And then at the front, you've just got a very tiny few percent. So if we look at what conditions they are, uh, all I've got here is I've just got walkers and everyone else. So if you're looking at our walkers, you can see that about 15% of walkers have arthritis, about 9% um, struggling with obesity. And then the, the most dominant conditions after that are depression, high blood pressure, chronic pain, anxiety, type 2 diabetes, asthma, irritable bowel syndrome, hearing loss. And we've got a long tail here of all sorts of conditions, uh, literally anything that you can think of. And we asked, uh, and we, we asked people to identify um, 50 plus uh, conditions. Um, in terms of runners walkers as a whole, it's dominated by arthritis, depression, anxiety and asthma. So what it tells you, although we might think of park runners as being a pretty healthy bunch of people, around 10% of them do have long-term conditions. So <clears throat> why do people first go to park runs? So um, we kind of said who we think the park runs are. So what's their motives for first turning up? And here's the key question for that. What motivated you to first participate at park run as a runner or walker? So we're not looking at volunteering. We've looked at volunteering in a previous uh, webinar and that's available online. So we're just gonna think about running and walking here. And we asked people to tick a maximum of three. So we wanted to know what their top three were. So that's what I'm gonna show you now. We've got all of these different answers here. We'll go through these. Um, and these were presented to our participants uh, um, in, in a random order. So people didn't see them in the same order because otherwise you get people just ticking the top three. So what do we first see? So proportion selecting the motive up the side. And here's our speed again from our fastest runners to our runners walkers and our walkers at the back. So to contribute to my fitness. So a good half of people tend to say contribute to my fitness, which is kind of not surprising. It's a running event ostensibly. So people want to perhaps become fitter. And that includes these uh, runners walkers and walkers at the back here. To improve my physical health. Well, there's a bit of a difference between front and back. Those at the back seem to be more interested in the physical health than those at the front, probably because they're quite physically healthy anyway. To manage my weight, again, you can see a, a clear difference there. Up to about a third of people at the back are interested in managing their weight. Uh, people at the front, maybe because they've managed their weight a little bit better, maybe they, they're not quite so interested in it. Um, to gain a sense of personal achievement um, is uh, interesting. So quite a broad kind of range of people interested in getting that sense of personal achievement. Of course, we need to delve into what each different part of the parkrun population mean by that exactly. And then to compete with others, this is really interesting. So people at the back here, the slower runners from halfway backwards, just really not interested as a motive of competing with others. And of course, people at the front, you know, that, that's kind of why they're turning up. Almost half are turning up because they want to compete with others. And that's the same kind of pattern that you see training for another event. 
perhaps a few more at the back who are thinking about other events and they've turned up to park run for train to train for those and then to getting actually just getting a time for 5k can i run a 5k can i get a time for it and so you get that same distribution those at the front really interested a few of those at the back are interested in that um encouragement my friends family or colleagues encourage me to not so many it wasn't a high the highest priority i must admit i expected this to be a little bit higher but up to about what you know 20 percent of people at the back from the halfway backwards um interested uh, because people encourage them to turn up um input to improve my mental health people tended not to put this down as a motive to feel part of a community interesting i thought people might be more interested in this but They've not put that down as, a, as one of their top three motives. And uh, to spend time outdoors, walkers have that bit more as a priority, spending time outdoors. And that possibly reflects the demographic, the places that, that walkers tend to live. Uh, to improve my happiness, very few people put that down as a motive. Uh, and catch to 5K as a motive, now that's, that's interesting that Couch to 5K, if you know the scheme, Couch to 5K, it's about um, going from nothing to five, to be able to run a 5K. And you go through kind of a walking, running, walking to running. And so that naturally points towards this group here, just ahead of those runners walkers. And you get most of them appearing in about the 37 and a half to 42 and a half um, uh, categories there. So that's Couch to 5K. Uh, to improve or manage my health condition, not so many, partly because, you know, only 10% had a long-term health condition, but again, the walkers more interested in that. So verging on 20% of those are doing parkrun primarily to improve their health condition. Uh, to spend time with friends, interesting. Not many people put that down as a motive or to spend time with family and uh, to be active in a safe environment, we thought might be more important, but more important for those at the back, if there was any difference. Uh, to meet new people, again, not, not that important. I thought it would be more important as a motive. Um, a healthcare professional advised me to. I'm just going to go backwards. If you look at the slides here, up the side, the, the proportions here, it goes from 70 down to 7%. So the scales drop by a tenth. So very few people put that their healthcare professional advise them to. Um, and we can discuss that perhaps a little bit later why that might have been. And then a charity, very few people put it down to raise money for charity. Although, you know, 1% of people, 1% uh, of 7 million people is quite a lot of people. <laughs> so you've done a park run, you're motivated to turn up. What is the impact of actually doing that park run? You've queued up. You've gone to the cafe, you've got your cup of coffee uh, and your bun, which I have to admit I do after every park run. So this was the next question, the impact of running or walking at park run. Thinking about the impact of park run on your health and well-being, to what extent has running or walking park run changed? And we've got some similar things to the motives. And then we've got these possible responses. So no impact. It didn't affect me at all. Running at Parkrun didn't affect this thing. Better or much better? Now, I have to say most people put either no impact, better or much better. And in terms of much worse or worse, minuscule numbers put down, put those down. So um, I've lumped together worse, worse much worse in, into no impact because you can't see them on the graphs I'm going to show you. But they do, they do exist, but they're very tiny. So let's look at the next graph. So um, what's the impact of park run on your fitness? So here we've got our time along the bottom again. There's a proportion. So we've got this first color, the lighter color is better. The darker color is much better. And then the white color there is no impact, worse and much worse. So your fitness, what's interesting, pretty similar right across the board as, as larger proportion of front runners said it improved their fitness as runners walkers and walkers so that's kind of interesting your sense of personal achievement if i just kind of toggle backwards and forwards you can see how the top varies you get more people in this slightly slower range 
having more of a sense of personal achievement being improved much better. And then your physical health, again, pretty similar across the board, 70 to 80 percent. Your happiness. Now, remember, very few people put down your happiness. And here we've got 70 to 80 percent saying that their happiness had been improved. Your mental health, again, not many people put this down as a motive, but more than 60 percent, 67 percent said that their mental health had improved. Your enjoyment of competing. Right, remember, this is one that was just kind of exponential drop off from front to back. Very few of people at the back said that they wanted to do part run for the com competition part of it. And yet half of them saying, do you know what? I quite enjoyed the competing. Now, who are they competing against? It's very clear that they're not competing against the front runners. They're probably competing against their peers, competing against themselves. And again, that's a future research question to delve into, but quite quite interesting that it engenders that kind of impact. The amount of time you spend outdoors, well, not unsurprisingly, people spend more time outdoors because park run is more, more outdoors, perhaps more of those slower runners. Um, how much you feel part of community, same all the way across, 70% more or less all the way across felt more part of community regardless of who you are. Your ability to be active in a safe environment, Similar for this whole rear group here, about 70% say they feel more, uh, they say in it, their, um, their ability to be active in a safe environment is better. Um, remind, remember this rear portion is dominated by, uh, by women as well. So that there's probably an element of that in there. Um, your ability to manage your health condition. So for those who had a health condition, they answered this around 60% or more said that running or walking at Parkrun improved their ability to manage their health condition. And again, from an NHS, NHS point of view, that's really, really important. Number of people you meet, people didn't put that down as a motive, and yet around 60% um, um, have that improved as, uh, as an impact. Their confidence has improved about 60% across the board. And lifestyle choices, interestingly, about at least half have found that their lifestyle choices are improved, diet and smoking. So it's not just about physical activity, it's about these other choices that people have. And their ability to control the weight, similar to our motive, people at the front were less interested in the back, but a large proportion, about half, are saying that um, um, participating in park runners improve their ability to control uh, their weight. And then the amount of time you spend with friends, similar across the board, about 40%. Time spent with family, less so, about 30%. Um, and and we, we, we leave it there. So what have we learned about our park runs there? So park runners are not all the same. They are very different from front to back. But yet, wherever you happen to run, your running time, there are people around you like you. And, and actually, I should say, the way I've written that, people around like you. You find if you do parkrun that people, you get to know those people and they do tend to like you because they're like you, if that makes sense. Um, motives are very personal. So motives are very personal to people, but there are broad things that we're seeing from front to back, broad changes, differences between the motives people at the front, the middle, and the back and we can kind of isolate any part of that population to see what they are at the back 45 percent of walkers have a long-term health condition and these are dominated by arthritis obesity depression anxiety uh, and asthma about six percent of those with these long-term health conditions improve the management of their condition and importantly the impacts are largely the same for all park runners, regardless of who you are, making it a really wide range um, uh, engagement across the population. So um, I'll finish there. I've talked about adults today, of course, uh, there is park run junior um, for young people as well. And I'll let my park runners leave and I will stop talking. Um, so if I stop sharing, I will now pass over to my friend and colleague, Simon Tobin.
Thank, thanks very much, Steve. I'm hoping you can see my slides okay and, and, and hear me okay. So firstly, what, 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 fantastic to, to be here with you today to, to celebrate the 75th birthday of the NHS and to talk about the NHS and Park Run, two organisations that I absolutely love um, and I'm completely, completely committed to. And really what I wanted to do today was to touch on some themes about that, that interaction between the NHS and Parkrun and to think about how that can transform people's lives and the ripple effect that that has going forward. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about my own personal journey. This is my uh, fantastic Parkrun in Southport at Hesketh Park, which we set up seven years ago. And as you can see, the weather in Southport is fantastic. It's sunny. Um, we have a, have a brilliant crowd come down every single Saturday. Um, I was an early adopter and, and I noticed very quickly coming down to Parkrun that my physical health, my physical activity improved, my stamina, and that was great and, and perhaps not surprising. But it was only a little bit later when I had a, a short period out for injury that I noticed that my mental health had actually got worse when I stopped coming to park run and taking part in physical activity. I found I was more stressed and that I couldn't concentrate as well. I didn't sleep as well. I felt just generally edgy. That all settled as soon as I was up and running again and, and literally back at park run. And so for me, park run became really very important for both my physical and for my mental health. So I became quite evangelical um, and probably quite annoying about it. <clears throat> and so I went back to my, my practice where I work. Um, this is my surgery, Norwood surgery, which is in, in Southport in, in the Northwest. And I started evangelizing really about Parkrun, trying to encourage my receptionists, admin staff, the people I work with, the doctors, the nurses, practice manager to come down and give Parkrun a go. Loads of them did and lots of them found it, it made a huge difference to their lives. So I was beginning to think that, yeah, I'm onto a good thing here, that there's a real, real potential here for, for Parkrun to change, change lives. So I began to experiment with my patients. This is a patient of mine, Eileen, who has very kindly um, agreed for me to share her story. Now, Eileen has, has struggled all her adult life with low self-esteem, low confidence, mental health issues, anxiety, and depression. But when I invited her down to Parkrun as part of a, a consultation, um, that changed her life. Her physical fitness improved, her mental health improved, her confidence improved, so much so that she felt she could take on the Great North Run in her home city of, of Newcastle. And that was, that was a, a, a huge thing for her. But not only that, there was a kind of a ripple effect that, like me, she became an evangelist for Parkrun and, and sort of shouting from the rooftops about what, what Parkrun could do. So more recently, Eileen has started bringing down her nephew, Tom, who has a severe physical disability um, and learning disabilities, and he's unable to walk more than about 10 metres unaided. But what Tom loves is he loves singing and he loves dancing and he loves being part of a crowd. So he comes down on a Saturday, we have him managing the funnel, we put the music on, blare it out through loudspeakers and we're all singing and we're dancing and just, just having a great time. So that kind of ripple effect is just moving outwards that, that, you know, that started with Eileen and is, is just, uh, you know, just affecting and impacting other people. This is the amazing Kelly Barton, who some of you may have heard about before, a patient of mine for nearly 30 years. Kelly was born blind and educated at St Vincent's Blind School in Liverpool, one of four in the, in the UK. And I'd, I'd just finished my training to become a, a guide runner. And Kelly said to me in a consultation that she was struggling with group exercise, that all the group physical activity sort of things she got involved with were worried about her falling over or bumping into stuff. They felt it was a bit of a risk. Um, so I invited her down to, to park run. Um, and for the first time ever, she ran outdoors and absolutely loved it. Now to cut a long story short, you know, she's really got the bug. Kelly is closing in on 250 park runs, which is, is absolutely amazing. 
Now, I couldn't commit to guiding Kelly um, every week. Um, so I linked her up with my friend, Mike, who had also trained as a, a guide for visually impaired runner, runners. And here they are completing their second London marathon. They've done countless half marathons and 10Ks, as well as a number of different group activities for people with, with visual impairments. Now, Kelly, not just physically, has, has just sort of grown and, and become substantially fitter as a result of Parkrun, but she's seen herself and be, uh, as more as a bit of a trailblazer now, talking about what's available for people with visual activities. I was watching the news last week. She popped up on BBC National Telly. And increasingly, she's becoming recognised as somebody who's making a really important contribution to access to physical activity for people with visual impairments. And again, we've got those ripples beginning to just spread outwards and impact on, on other people. But it's not just your physical activity, your physical health that improves mental health you know, with Parkrun. This again is Kelly with Mike. This was taken two weeks ago when they completed the Southport Half Marathon. And um, they announced at that point that they're getting married in October. I take most of the credit for getting them together. Um, but it's not just your physical uh, mental health, it's your love life as well that um, Parkrun can, can do wonders for. Lastly, I want to talk to you about my friend Zana, who's here on the left. Zana, a fantastic, fantastic woman. She was born in the UK, grew up in Nigeria, and then came back to the Northeast to do her medical training, where she trained as a doctor. She got her first consultant post in Southport and moved over to, moved to Southport some, some years ago. But Zana's really, really quiet. Um, she's shy. She doesn't make friends, friends easily. And, uh, you know, it was when a friend at work invited her down to Park Run that things really changed. She came down, she loved, you know, you know running at Park Run, but more importantly for her was the volunteering. And it got her to meet new people, make friends. And, and Zana now has a thriving social life with people she meets up with during the week, at weekends, for coffee and, and, and doing stuff together. And that wouldn't have happened if she hadn't been invited down to, to Park Run that day. But who invited Zana? Well, it was Eileen, who I talked about earlier. So Eileen and Zana worked together. And, and so again, it, it just seems to me that we perhaps underappreciate this potential of Park Run to transform lives and to work like have a ripple effect that just sort of radiates outwards. Now, I used to think that Southport Park Run was magical. There was something special that we were doing at Southport Park Run. But it turns out that when I, when I talk to other people across the country, that Southport Park Run isn't special, that amazing magical transformations like this are happening at Park Runs all across the UK and across the world. And so it, I began to talk to other GPs. I talked to the amazing, um, Ollie Hart in Sheffield and the brilliant um, Abby Brooks in York about what I was doing. And it turned out they were doing the same thing. Uh, and this was happening in patches all across the country. Now, as a result of that, we decided that wouldn't it be brilliant if we could do something on a national footprint to link up Park Run with primary care and, and general practice in particular. So five years ago, headed and led by the, the astonishing Chrissy Wellington, um, we launched the Parkrun Practice Initiative, which was really a link up between Parkrun and the Royal College of GPs. And the idea was to just have a free way of connecting GP practices with their local park runs to encourage promoting park run and physical activity for their staff and for their patients alike. So we've been going now for, for five years. And the, the impact has been astonishing. We've, we've had loads of research, which Steve and Helen have been involved with and, and other organizations too. We've published loads about it. When we set off, I was hoping for maybe 10, 20 practices across the UK, but nearly 1,800, that's over 20% of GP practices are now linked to their local park run. That's, that's astonishing and, and far exceeded anything I could possibly, possibly have imagined. It's been so effective that it's been rolled out in Australia and across the Republic of Ireland as well. So it's really, really making a difference to loads of people's lives. 
So for me, the, the link up between the NHS and Park Run is really important for its ability to transform um, people's lives and that ripple effect that perhaps we, we underappreciate that it might have on other people. So I'm going to stop sharing my, my screen here. And what I'd like to, to do is introduce um, a patient of mine, Sean Smith, who's very kindly come along to speak to us today. You've heard enough about me telling other people's stories for them. So it's fantastic that Sean, Sean's kind enough to, to tell his own story. So Sean, welcome. Thank you so Thank much you. for um, agreeing to come on. If I can just set the scene, you're, you're 62 now and seven years ago, you, you had an unexpected heart attack that came completely out of the blue. So perhaps could you tell us how things were prior to that in your life and, and where you were up to? Yeah, uh, thanks, Simon. P a pleasure to be here. Um, so uh, I, I worked in government IT. Um, I was not like, unlike many people in the country, I was working 45, 50 hours a week, another 10 hours of traveling, pretty intense job. Between that and the family, other things, I didn't really get a lot of time for exercise. I did try a bit of swimming, that type of thing. Uh, but in hindsight, uh, pretty unfit, really. And as you say, you know, perhaps not surprisingly, um, I had a cardiac arrest uh, completely out of the blue. No warning signs. Uh, and that was it. I was laid low. Oh, OK. So that was seven years ago. Seven years ago. And yeah. tell me... Uh, you know, about how that affected your life you know firstly fit physically how how did you find oh, things uh, uh it, it completely changed my life of course um i had to retire uh, on health grounds so um uh and measures of that um when i for example the first time i came into the surgery i couldn't face the stairs. i couldn't use the stairs i had to get the lift i couldn't walk, walk anywhere uh, when um, my one of my early challenges was that my wife drove me to uh, the park around Hesketh Park. My challenge was simply to get out of the car, walk through the gates, and find a park bench, sit down, and then that was it. And then walk back. That was the limit of my ability. Um, they told me in hospital uh, that uh, the type of uh, heart attack I had has got a twelve percent survival rate, one in eight. Uh, um, uh, pretty good and that my heart um, uh, function was down to about 30 percent uh, they didn't tell me that um, actually for most people it's it's not a hundred percent but uh, nonetheless it was quite shocking um, and um, so and, and also of course um, immediately after a heart attack I now know uh, your heart heart uh, function is also impaired and it, it can get better with exercise um, so, um, I can see you, uh, the NHS has been absolutely fantastic, saved me, uh, I owe them that, uh, and all the work you've done, went through the hospital programme. It was clear, to, two things, one is uh, I was extremely lucky to have survived, so you know, you don't mess around with that, you, uh, you, you take that and uh, you build on it, uh, but the other thing was that, um, that your best chances of uh, not having another one was exercise. Um, and so they um, started in the gym, just in the hospital where they have a, a health program um, and uh, just walking um, as best you can. So over a period of time, um, my my fitness built up a little bit. Uh, and then, of course, um, you recommended Parkrun. I'd never heard of it before, even though it's only a half a mile from where I live. Um, and so th almost three months to the day. After my heart attack, I did my first one. Uh, I walked uh, 51 minutes, which I was pretty impressive at the time, just just to get there. Uh, so it was a yeah, from a very low level of fitness, um, it was those first few months got me to the position where I could walk uh, five kilometres, and that was a real achievement. Okay, so, so I mean it's clear to me that you, you were physically really quite a low ebb and, and the heart attack had made a, a big, you know, had a profound impact on your, your physical health. Emotionally yeah. and your, your mental health, how, how was that? So it sounds quite scary what you're describing. It sounds um, very scary. Very, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, I, I end up in intensive care in, in a very acute ward, uh, being monitored every hour or, you know, frequently, lots of... Um, uh, sensors put across me 
And then one day they say, well, that's it, you can go home now. And, it, and all of a sudden you're in the car going home. And you do wonder whether you know, you're know you going to survive for the next hour or, or so. Um, mentally, it was uh, absolutely bewildering. Um, I'd never been uh, re sick really at all uh, during my working career. Um, I didn't know what I could achieve. I didn't know whether you meant to, you know, I wonder whether I should just you know, lie down in a darkened room and just you know, hope for the best or something like that. Um, but no, you were very clear that the, the, the um, hospital was very clear that within limits, you, you get up and you start exercising. Um, and that, so, so uh, um, whilst that was frightening, uh, you offered me hope um, and a way forward. And you had, between you and, and, and the hospital as well, confidence that I could do it. And that was really important to me. Um, a guidance, uh, uh, an encouragement and enthusiasm to, to get up and, and get going. Uh, so the early part runs were a real triumph for me. They were a real eye opener about what I could do then, my, what my limits were and where I could get to. And that was vital to me. Um, that really got me going. Uh, so in terms of mental, uh, mental health, it, it, was, um, it, it was always difficult to get you know start the run each day but at the end of it I knew it was going to be very rewarding um and uh, very encouraging can I just uh, add as well just building on what um, Steve has said um the thing I had not expected was the level of community um it does not matter at all uh, your, your time in in the grand scheme of things uh you just achieve just walking and um you get huge amounts of support from uh all the runners, the, the ones who come first, the ones who come last, doesn't matter. Everyone supports each other. It's it's a wonderful feeling from all the spectators and from uh, all the runners and the volunteers and uh, the marvelous volunteers. But you know your cohort. You get to know the people around you, and you're not and not at our level. You're not competing with them. You're encouraging each other and you're celebrating each other's triumphs. And it does become social. You chat at the beginning. Sat, chat at the end, you meet new friends. Yes, sometimes you, you meet them outside of uh, the park on a Saturday as well. It's it's really, it's something that carries me uh, through um, and makes it um, a wonderful uh, thing to go to. Um, so, yeah. Brilliant. It's, it's really interesting what you're saying about hope and that's something that really, really interests me about instilling hope um, of a better future. Absolutely. So you've you've recently celebrated. We celebrated your hundred and fiftieth park Absolutely. run. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, astonishing achievement. Well, well, well done. Just lastly, I'd, I'd be really interested in your thoughts for what changes you've noticed over those hundred and fifty park runs in your in your mental health and in your physical health as a result of of being prescribed in inverted commas, you know, park run. Well, it, it was a brilliant suggestion. Um, I, I am so much fitter than I, I've been since I was a teenager. I so said, when you first suggested it, I, I was a bit sceptical. I was open to it because I needed to, to, to find ways of improving my fitness. But I've never been a runner. I am not a natural runner. At school, I played rugby. Stop, start, stuff, circuit training, no problem. Could never do cross country. The first time I ran park run without stopping, was an absolute triumph, you know, regardless of the cardiac uh, arrest. So it has made a huge difference to me. Um, I, I, I go to the gym, I swim, uh, things, but the park run is always the pinnacle of the week. It's, it's my measure uh, of how well I'm doing, and that keeps me going. It, it's also given me confidence, a different sort of confidence, which is that you, you, I can't, well, I can't speak for everyone, but myself, I can't be good all the time, you know, going to the gym and eating well, you know, family celebrations, holidays, whatever. But I know now after 150 that it doesn't matter. I can get back to where I was. And so it, it has been an absolute uh, essential factor for me in my, um, in my running. I could say look, I am an unlikely runner and it's been wonderful being, and if I can do it, I'm sure uh, it could be of value to an, a whole range of people. So I'm eternally grateful. It's an idea which uh, 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 is the right idea at the right time. It's it's wonderful. So I would thoroughly recommend it. And it has been fantastic for me. Brilliant. Sean, thank you so much for, for sharing your sharing your story. It's really moving for me to hear to hear you, you recount it and you tell it. It's so much more powerful coming from, from your mouth than it can okay. ever be coming from... Um, 
uh, from mine. So, so thank you. Thank you so much. For me, and you know, I'm grateful for all you've done as well. Thanks. So thank, thank you, Matt. Thank you. It's, it's wonderful to hear these stories of, of, of transformation and how when the NHS and Parkrun work together, we can deliver you know, magical things that, that can really happen. So for any of you out there who are interested in the Parkrun Practice Initiative, if you just Google that, um, or we'll put it, we'll put it in the links for this, this presentation, just click on it. It's free, it's simple, and, and we'd love more and more practices to sign up and to link with their, their local Parkrun. But I'm going to hand you back to, to Helen now. Um, if we've got time for, for any questions. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Simon, and to Sean for, for sharing your story. We um, we have got lots of questions, and I think I will ask ask those questions. Um, obviously, if anyone needs to leave, as we did say, it would, would finish at 12.45, then please do so. Uh, the recording will be available afterwards. Um, so I will, I've got a couple of questions for Steve first, based on your presentation. Um, so David Irwin was wanting to know a little bit more about do we know anything about change over time in the motives and impact? So based on the graphs that you were sharing, have we got any insights into how those motives and impacts are have changed? Oh, that is such a good question. And the answer is no, we don't. Um, no, because we go, we ask the question, what first um, motivated you to participate? And then we ask later, so what? Um, we, we have done a small longitudinal study. Um, I noticed that Brian Keenan is here on the uh, on, on the webinar, and I think I saw one of his uh, chat responses is that his PhD, he's looking precisely at that, trying to delve deeper into how do people transition from those initial motives and how do their thoughts change? A bit like, you know, what, what Sean has just said, you know, the unlikely runner, you know, not perceiving yourself as that kind of person, then going, oh my God, I appear to be running. Oh my God, you know, but it's the, the motive might have been fitness and health, but it turns out that actually it's that encouragement and that community spirit of the people around you that keeps you going. So I'm sorry, the answer is no, but I'm hoping that the PhDs, particularly Brian's for instance, uh, will answer that question. Thank you, Steve. Um... I mean, the, yeah, the research opportunities are endless when it comes to parkrun and all the data it has. Um, David also wanted to know, um, has park has the encouragement of park walking changed any of these? Um, yeah, we haven't we haven't specifically asked um, park walkers since park walk has uh, appeared, um, which happened in I can't remember when it happened. It's the last kind of eighteen months, really, isn't it? I think. Um, post pandemic. So um, it will have had an impact. And I noticed you said in the in the chat that in terms of parkrun times, parkrun times have been decreasing year on year, because the demographic of parkruns has changed from a free weekly timed uh, kind of time trial, which was its early uh, inception, um, you know, 15 years ago to today, where it is more of like a community event. And I think what we find in terms of all the studies that we get in terms of the social com component and social capital, Parkrun, you kind of conceive as Parkrun as a community event that happens to have a five kilometer thing right in the middle of it. So people turn up, they stand around, they talk. They then do five kilometers, they might walk it, talk, chat, and then at the end, uh, they stand around, talk, chat. And it just happens that that 5K is the thing that bonds them together. So again, the answer is no. I, I haven't seen any research on park run specific apart from the slight increase in numbers for those who are doing it uh, in, in a slower time. Thank you, Steve. Um, so for Simon, there's quite a few questions for you. You might want to go back through the, the chat to answer some because I'm not sure we'll get through them all. But I've just picked out a few. Um, one question came in. Do some GPs or health professionals um, worry about people injuring themselves, such as their knees and causing more physio scan referrals, um, making them more reluctant to encourage people to start running in general? But, you know, this referral to Parkrun. I think certainly 
10 years ago, there was a concern that, that running and physical activity might wear out your joints. Um, there's clear evidence nowadays, and it's widely accept, uh, accepted across the, the medical profession, that physical activity and running is great for your physical and for your mental health and doesn't um, wear your joints out more, more quickly. So I think that's changed. Again, in the early days, there was also a worry about liability. If I, as a GP, recommended somebody like Sean to come down to the park run and something happened to Sean, would I be liable? Um, but we've now got, got, got past that. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it's widespread now across the UK that, that GPs and healthcare professionals, practice nurses, uh, all believe really, really strongly in the power of physical activity. Thanks, Simon. Um, there was also a question around, do you, Simon, ever experience resistance from patients? And, um, you know, how do you overcome that cynicism? That's a hard word to say from from patients. But I think you maybe covered that with Sean because maybe he was one of those patients. Oh, there are people who are far more resistant than Sean to, to taking on physical activity. And Sean wasn't resistant at all. Um, Sean was sort of, you know, gently sceptical, but, but willing. Um, it, it is a real problem, but I, I don't see myself as, as on a mission to convince people and my, my patients to come down to Parkrun. I think of Parkrun as one of the options to offer people of a menu of things that might improve their health. And I'm not expecting everybody to come down to Parkrun. And I've recommended Parkrun to well over 200 of my patients. Only a small proportion of those have actually made it down to the, to the park run. And I've looked at the numbers for this. Um, and it's a bit like sort of scattering corn. And some of that will, will, will sort of germinate immediately and, and grow into something amazing. Often it won't. And for some people, those little seeds will just sort of stay there and may actually begin to sprout in, you know, in years to come. Um, but for me, it's about being patient centered and allowing my patients to choose what works for them. Park run works for me, but it may not work for them. So there's no pressure for me to, to, you know, to get people down to park run. It's just about this is one option that might deliver what you're hoping for. And we come back to the thing about hopes is finding out what is it that people are hoping for from their, their preferred future. Fab. Yes. And Sean, do you have anything to add about what you would say to somebody who is quite cynical and just really not sure about park run? What would be your kind of words of wisdom? Give it a try. Um, you, it is not about people in Lycra. You can walk it. There are small children in Wellingtons who, who do it. It's, it's, um, it, it's easy. Uh, it's uh, so convenient the way it's organised. But it's the community spirit. Just come down and join in. and It's uh, truly rewarding. Definitely go for it. Fab, thank you. Um, and yeah, just to feedback, Sean, everyone on the chat has been, you know, really moved and inspired by your story today. So, so thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah. Just one final question, maybe for, for for everyone in terms of different different ways that Parkrun can be prescribed. Is there any other healthcare settings that Parkrun is being prescribed within? S somebody has mentioned the the uh, prison park runs that it's not a healthcare setting but it's another um you know avenue through which park run is is reaching people are there any other um healthcare settings or settings that you know park run is is being prescribed through yes well, uh, yeah if, if i can at least take a first stab at this um yes many many settings and, and we've had i've had countless suggestions from groups and healthcare providers who want to, to link with Parkrun. We went with the Royal College of GPs because everybody in the country has a GP um, and it's you know community and primary care based. But I've had discussions with cardiologists, um, with physiotherapists, with anaesthetists who are looking for rehab. So getting pay, you know, people into the best condition <clears throat> prior to operations, um, uh, uh, mental health services, uh, there are all kinds of, of healthcare providers who, who are, are wanting to link up with Parkrun and, and bring it on. You, you know, the more health providers who, you know, who get involved and begin to refer and encourage patients to come along, the better. Bob, thank you. I think the question came from Susie, who works in um, 
uh, mental health settings and she would really like to see more of it in, in that setting. Um, OK, so in the interest of time, I think I might um, wrap wrap things up. There are other other questions in the chat that we sadly haven't had time to, to cover, but um, we will save the chat and can and can reflect on those questions. Um, just to say thank you so much to our speakers, to Steve, Simon and Sean for coming along and, and, and presenting and making this a really fantastic session. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to our brilliant colleague, Rachel, behind the scenes at the AWRC, who without her, we would not have pulled this together. So thank you so much, Rachel. And thank you all for joining us and for being really engaged and posing lots of questions and introducing yourselves. It's been really lovely to read the chat as, as the speakers have been talking today. So thank you so much for that. The recording, like I say, will be available afterwards. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that on the AWRC website. Um, and just to also share that alongside this seminar, we have pulled together a collection of research papers um, that are very relevant to the topics that we have um, been discussing today. And that again is available on the Parkrun Research Board website. So we've got a collection of um, eight articles that are all open access, so can be can be accessed by anyone. Um, all touching on all, all of these points that we've made today. So please do have a look at that and share it through your networks and colleagues. So that is about it. Thanks again to everyone. Um, and yes, keep your eyes peeled. Have a great um, time this weekend if you're celebrating at a local park run. I believe it is fancy dress is encouraged. So um, yeah, have a great weekend and thank you all for coming. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.